Hello and good evening, everyone. On this Thursday night, we have another tornado warning to update you about. I'll have the details on that. Your photos uploaded to HodgesWeather.com of the activity tonight as it worked its way across the border. Here's the very latest. We're going straight ahead to a look at the radar right now where we do have a couple of areas of concern. There is a Marshall County storm heading into the northern reaches of Pennington County right now that's fairly stout, but not severe. A brand new tornado warning. That is where we will start and multiple reports of uh, tornadoes in and around the Norcross area up to the north of this area uh, moments ago. Here's a look at what's going on. The tornado warn storm is uh, near the Clinton area moving off to the east southeast. Let's get the latest from the National Weather Service on the tornado warn storm. It's moving south at 13 miles per hour, south uh, southeast at 13 miles per hour, one and a half inch diameter hail possible from that storm. It does have that backward C shape, but again, that's a tornado warn storm. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, 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 velocity with this storm see if we can pinpoint where there is that rotation following this track you can kind of see right here just not off to the east of clinton and moving south as uh, southeast right here that is the tornado uh, or the Doppler indicated tornado as it works its way to the southeast. So mainly in rural areas north of Odessa to Corral down there in parts of Minnesota, not far from Ortonville at this time. So that's where things are going on there. Now let's go ahead and pop this back on the normal radar view, taking a look at what's going on up to the north, then your photos. So uh, stick with me here as we go up to the north and take a look at these uh, storms up here in Marshall County, south of New Folden. Those storms are pushing in on the Viking area. Look Look at the intensification of the lightning with these cells as they cross over toward that uh, Highway 1 corridor there, not far from the Viking area right now. So a lot of lightning off there, just off to the west of Thief River Falls. They look at that particular storm and, uh, pardon me, just about how uh, far away it is from your area there in Thief River. Let's go ahead and take a look. Generally moving in, in your direction, let's see if it is about... Let's start here. Okay, so it's about 15 miles away with this storm's movement off at about uh, 20 miles per hour. It's a little ways away from you folks in the Thief River area at this particular time, but that's a stout one. Not severe warned yet, but it is increasing its intensity. And sometimes we can see that there when we do get that... Um, uh, increase in the lightning activity with that particular storm. So we'll keep our eyes on that. That's what's going on there. Now, here's the risk. This is what's going on. We have a few showers making their way through. For those of you out at the West Fargo uh, uh, cruise night, I was on my way. I was going to go, and you know what? It got busy, real busy. Numerous tornado warnings. There's the, the multiple tornado reports in the Norcross area from tonight as well. We do have some scattered showers along the Highway 200 corridor, all moving extremely slowly. Bemidji, uh, we're looking at the Park Rapids area, seeing some showers move through. Those are non-severe on this very hot and muggy night taking us way through. Now let's go to your photos uploaded to HutchesWeather.com, and I encourage you, if you have not done so yet, and if you've taken photos or videos, uh, please go ahead and take the time to upload those right here on HutchesWeather.com. And here is a look at a couple of views from the storms right up at the top here. You can see everything from rainbows and beyond. But check this out. This is right at the Dakota Magic Casino. There's the gas station there. And look at the size of this tornado that dropped down. And thank you so very, very much. I'm a much appreciative Chris there. Lizakowski for sharing this. Reporting a 21-minute tornado on the ground that worked its way across, uh, spotted while they were traveling on the interstate, and there were a number of lookers uh, to that event as it was ongoing in that particular area. Another view of this uh, similar storm here, this is from Cassandra Johnson, as viewed from Ross Holt. So you're looking up to the north, you can see the sunlight lighting off the left side of the clouds there. So that northerly view providing the view of that pipe as it worked its way across the region. Thank goodness it didn't go right through a town. And what a picturesque type of tornado it was visible from miles away. Thank you, Cassandra, for sharing your upload of the photo. There's another one of that same storm. Then we have Megan capturing an elbow lake rainbow. So there is a little beauty after the storm worked its way in uh, as it works its way through. Now, taking a look at a the storm clouds of brewing up there, Jerry capturing that in the Breckenridge area as they worked their way through. And you know what? In the Shevlin area, you can't go wrong with the Mother Nature photos either. Beautiful shot, Sharon, in Shevlin. Thank you so very, very much for uploading that. 
um, as well. Okay, so this is a look at what's going on across the region right now, south of Morris. We do have some storms tumbling through. Here's HutchesWeather.com. When I'm live, it tells you right at the top of the page. Drop your email in the list here. Over a thousand of you have done so. That lets me tap you on the shoulders when there's something super important to get out there, and this is what's going on. Tornado warning does continue for this area down here until 8 o'clock south and east of Clinton. There's still some rotation showing up in the storm here as I uh, go ahead and put the radar back up here. My apologies. Here we go. So here's the tornado warn storm moving to the south, southeast of Clinton. Notice the hail core here pushing in very close to you folks in Ortonville. So if you're in Ortonville to Odessa, there's a severe thunderstorm warning in that particular area. Uh, that is four hail upwards of one and one quarter inch in diameter. The maximum wind gusts upwards of about 60 miles per hour, six zero miles per hour as that storm continues to move southward with its threat for the hail. There's a little line of thunder shower activity, not a lot of lightning with it, that just passed through Ender Enderlin, heading towards Leonard, heading towards Kindred. And we have some lakes country showers moving through, all non-severe on this evening. A look at your temperatures. They look like this. Look at that big storm dropping temperatures like a bad habit out there. From the, well, look at that, mid-80s into the 70s here, heading into your evening. 82 Grand Forks, no relief from you yet, or for your area yet, but there's a cool pool that's on on its way down we have a cold front making its way through this is what it looks like on the big large scale weather map so Here's the cold front knifing through. You see the narrowing of the isobars right in here. That's the low pressure center as it works its way across. Now behind it, northwest winds ushering in some cooler air. It's going to be one more day of warm weather here in the valley, although less humid. And then we'll see that cool pool march its way in. What does Hutch mean about the cool pool? Well, check it out. 79 on your Friday and a little warmer up in Grand Forks. And we will have some spotty and passing spits and sprinkles from our atmosphere as we go through. The wind will be the strongest in the northern counties. It will be the strongest in Minnesota as this low pressure system exits to the east. And boy, does it usher in the pool of cool. Check it out. 39 degrees on your Monday for the morning temperature. And we stay in the 60s Saturday, Sunday. Harvest weather indeed. Gorgeous conditions across the area. And uh, Brenda says she's excited for some 60s for temperatures. So again... Uh, active weather pattern in our area tonight with a cold front knifing its way through the region. It is promising to bring some changes to the area. And check out your temperatures tomorrow across the region. Thanks, Shirley, for watching from Moorhead. Northwest winds that will be strongest in Minnesota will have those winds causing temperatures to drop like a two-ton heavy thing right on your toenail down into the low to mid-60s up there in places like Crosby, Noonan, Plentywood, Montana, and maybe even Brockton, Montana, as you go out here in the valley, will be near 80 degrees once again, but the changes will be in the offing as we go through, as you saw in the seven-day planner. Hope you had a chance to check out tonight's Hutch's Weather Kid, and it was sure exciting to have uh, Kiana on board to share the weather with me, and I got to tell you what, she did just a fantastic job, and we talked about a very fitting topic tonight, and that was damaging straight-line winds, although tonight's winds are a little more spinny than straight-line winds, there's still a risk that a couple of these storms could produce some gusty winds. So one area of isolated thunderstorm activity taking place for our viewers up in that Thief River Falls area, southern parts of Marshall County. Those are working their way to the southeast and toward Thief River Falls as we head into the evening hours. So there's that activity. Not severe right now, but an increase in lightning just over the last couple of minutes has me concerned that it may be getting a little bit stronger. And look at what's going on down here. As we look towards Millbank and Hancock, there is still a tornado warning. Millbank now under a severe thunderstorm warning we got one two three individual thunderstorm clusters right here and a big old umbrella of very heavy rain making its way through the morris area as we head into the late evening hours that's your update i'm meteorologist hutch johnson if storms do develop in your area that there is a chance that they may indeed become severe but as we talked about before pretty isolated in nature. For my friends up there in the Rainy Lake area, I know I have a few viewers that can check in from time to time. We do have some stout thunderstorms rolling out of and toward the International Falls area after one band just moved through right over Rainy Lake. So keep in mind, we have some wild weather with this cold front working its way into the region tonight. With cold frontal passages, they can sometimes mix down some of that smoke that we saw in the atmosphere over the last several um, weeks 
weeks of summer, and you can see it clear as mud. Look at this. The sludge in the air here, this little pall of milky white, that is all that smoke. And um, not all of it is down at the surface, but we do have some smoke levels that are increasing. Look at this uh, big old pancake lighting up the skies right here. That is the updraft, bringing that moisture in the form of clouds all the way up into the upper levels of the troposphere, hitting the tropopods or the bottom of the stratosphere right there, making this huge cloud mass spread out across the entire portion of western and west central Minnesota right now. This guy's trying to get going. There's the one storm that's in Marshall County heading toward Pennington County, and those are the two main actors in the play tonight. For now, I'll keep you posted right here. You're watching Hutch's Weather. We will take a quick peek at some of these smoke levels with the air quality from my friends at Purple Air. Purple Air has instruments across our region that help uh, uh, allow us to see some of the levels of air quality at the surface in many locations. Here's the bottom line. Where you see the greens, the air quality is pretty good. Where you see the yellows and oranges, it starts to decrease a little bit. So even though we're seeing the schmutzy looking air that looks all uh, schmutzy, well, it's not all at the surface. So most of that smoke that we're seeing make its way in a little bit higher. When we get out into the big sky country of Montana, this is where we have the super duper unhealthy air quality taking place. We're talking Lewistown. We're talking Helena. We're talking Missoula. We're talking all of these areas in the in the Rocky Mountains. And this is unhealthy for all once we start seeing those purple colors out there. And that's air that really is, well, choking. Some big time fires that are burning in the lower 48 right now, along with some activity in Canada. But notice this, the air quality, even in parts of Alberta near Calgary, and our friends in Regina out there in Saskatchewan, the air quality a little better. But when we get way up north there, eh, we do see that not far from Fort McMurray, we do have some uh, more decrease in the air quality. So that's what's going on with our air quality. It looks like I got another tornado warning here, do I? Yeah, it's just an update and a severe thunderstorm warning for you folks in Thief River Falls. Let's get right down to it. That storm that I was just analyzing for you, and I talked about that increase in uh, lightning activity. Shazam Shabing, National Weather Service says it's time for a severe thunderstorm warning for that puppy because it's going to be capable of severe weather. When it comes to severe thunderstorms, severe is defined as hail that could be one inch in diameter or greater, or we could be talking about the other factor, and that's gusty straight line winds to 60 miles per hour. So I'm going to pause this from looping here right quick, and now let's take a look at what the National Weather Service says. We're looking at 22 mile per hour movement to the southeast, one and one half inch diameter hail, that's pretty good size hail, and 60 mile per hour winds. Not everybody in this area is going to get the severe weather. We can analyze the radar data here right, right now on Hutch's weather, and we'll go ahead and take a look at where the core of hail is. So that will tell us where the best chance of hail will be. And then we also can tell you a little bit more about where we'll have the greatest risk for seeing those winds. And we'll take a look at this storm. Now, number one, look at all that lightning right there along Highway 1 at the bend in the road, not far from Viking. So there is where the hail core is, where we see the uh, the blue colors uh, uh, highlighting here. All the hail uh, and all of the lightning all kind of co-located right there over that Highway 1 corridor. So that's not a fun drive for you right now. And if you have friends that are driving or live in this particular area, not far from Viking or in the northwestern reaches, of the Pennington County area. This is where things are going. You're welcome, Busy Cat, for the heads up. Thanks, Sammy Joe, for watching. What about Williston, North Dakota? We'll get to you guys in just a second. Let's go in a little bit closer to the storm. So here's the hail core where you see the blue. Again, radar beams go up at an angle. So this is hail that the radar sees uh, way up high in the sky, well above the ground, a good couple miles up there. So that doesn't mean it's hailing right now at that spot, but there's some chunks of ice in the sky that are lighting up that radar view pretty good. Now the movement of this storm southeast at 20 miles per hour. We can go ahead and take a look at the uh, movement of that storm for you and time out when it will get to uh, different communities uh, down in Pennington County as it exits the Marshall County, Minnesota area. So here we go. We'll just draw, we'll draw a leading edge here. Pardon me. There we go having problems with my drawing skills. Okay, moving southeast at about 20 to 25 miles per hour. It's gonna be close to Thief River, but it does look like the hail core part of it's gonna stay mainly right down the center of this warning area. St. Hilaire, you stand a decent chance, but look at the time frame for it to arrive to you. 
Uh, Red Lake Falls and in your area, uh, St. Hilaire by 828 and about 847 could be moving on in the general vicinity of uh, Red Lake Falls if it maintains its current uh, track and strength. Who knows if it'll still be as strong. Looking at the velocity with regards to this storm, is there some spin in it? The atmosphere does have some spin, but this is a little bit far away from the radar. So again, we're looking way up high in the sky cloud a uh, good couple of miles above the ground and we are seeing a little bit of uh general rotation uh with this particular storm but it's not necessarily indicative that there's going to be a tornado with this that's not the main concern the very large hail right along highway one there is that's going to be in rural portions of western pennington county here in the upcoming half hour so that's a quick look at that brand spanking new uh, uh thunderstorm warning issued from the national weather service forecast office there in grand forks north dakota garden variety showers on the highway 200 corridor through uh steel county right now is where they're most focused and a little intensification of these cells not far from Heideland lake it looks like out here as you're going through the eastern reaches of becker county along highway 34 and points north and heading into park rapids and down towards dent and vergas out there not far from star lake we do have ourselves a little bit of a development uh, of the thunderstorm activity there as well the main event is where things started today with a little thunderstorm cell that produced this bad boy up there on the northern reach or in the northern reaches of south dakota and the southern reaches of north dakota look at that tube hanging down from the sky viewed by you and uploaded by many to hutchesweather.com so thanks a lot to all of you who have participated these reports are extremely helpful and they help us see the the, uh, well, the magnitude of what's going on, and it helps us verify as meteorologists what's going on in the atmosphere. Tornado warning does continue uh, for you folks down there uh, in and around this uh, area uh, north of Corel and Odessa, just off to the north and east of the Ortonville area in Minnesota, in western Minnesota, and that warning is in effect until 8.30, moving southeast at 21 miles per hour. That's a dangerous storm and large, very large hail over one inch in diameter possible, moving right into Ortonville right now. Uh, so uh, batten down the hatches, but prepare for some gusty straight line winds with that storm uh, as well as it's moving more southerly than easterly now, diving down towards places like Montevideo, Madison, and on towards Appleton there uh, on the uh, Minnesota River Valley. Uh, at this particular time. So that is what we have going on right now. Severe thunderstorms up north, severe thunderstorms down south, and we sit here caught in the middle again. Meteorologist Hutch Johnson thanking you for watching. Thanks for your trust in covering your weather. If you have anything to report, please uh, upload your photos and your reports to hutchesweather.com. Please don't forget to leave the location and the approximate time of the event. That's very helpful in us passing that along to the National Weather Service. For now, if storms approach your area down in parts of western Minnesota, seek shelter from them. They are severe uh, in a couple different areas where we've been discussing. Until next time, stay tuned to me here on Hutch's Weather and stay safe.